The exploits of gangs and notorious outlaws were chronicled in papers throughout the country. When they went down in a blaze of glory, townspeople wanted proof, and the authorities wanted to show any would-be lawbreaker who came to town the fate that awaited them. With the invention of photography during the first quarter of the 19th century, now there was a way to do both. The corpses of dead outlaws would be displayed, sometimes entire gangs pushed together, sometimes a duo stood up and propped together for one final photograph before being tossed six feet under. Even notable citizens like the famous gambler and dancer Kitty Leroy were propped up in photos of this style. Probably to the surprise of no one, food in the Wild West was pretty awful. Breakfast might be the exception, with cornbread, stew, boiled eggs, fried potatoes, and omelets being some good-looking food. Dinner might consist of calf's head, boiled mutton, or soused calf's feet. For dessert, you might get pudding. These are typical foods of a family on the frontier in 1853. Food cooking was simple. Think ovens, frying pans, and roasting spits. And the food would have been restricted to whatever meat or veggies was available during that time of year. Cowboys typically ate canned beans, rock-hard biscuits, dried meat, dried fruit, and coffee. Strut through a saloon's doors, saddle up on a bar stool, order the bartender's finest whiskey, and then proceed to gag. This stuff tastes like gasoline, but the bottle says it's been aged 10 years, and comes from Kentucky, what gives? Back then, laws against copyright were lax, if enforceable at all. And since you're in the frontier, there was no one around to care. Heck, a lot of the whiskey being sold might have been mixed with water or other spirits to increase profits. According to Sirius Eats, some of the so-called bourbons were sometimes distilled from low-grade molasses. Nicknames for popular whiskey in that era include Coffin Varnish, Mountain Howitzer, and Tangle Leg. Booze so strong that your legs would get tangled while trying to leave the door. It's no revelation that Native American settlements predate European ones, but it may surprise some people that Acoma Pueblo, west of Albuquerque, New Mexico, has been continuously occupied since the 12th century. The Acoma still inhabit their Sky City, a settlement of about 4,800 people that sits atop a 365-foot high mesa. Traditionally hunters and traders, the Acoma people now make their income from a cultural center and casino complex. Please show that support for this new channel by clicking subscribe so you don't miss the new episode. The Wild West is known mostly for its gunslingers and outlaws, but serial killers played a part too. The Bender family, aka the Bloody Benders, were a family of German immigrants who lived in Labette County, Kansas for just one year, from 1871 to 1872. The family cabin had a well and a barn with a corral, and they divided the cabin into a general store and a small lodging for travelers. By contemporary accounts, the people were mean, strange, or off-putting. In total, four benders lived on the property, John, his wife, their son, and his girlfriend, who may have been his sister. The family is believed to have killed at least 11 people, and their remains were buried in their orchard. As people began to question the disappearances and close in on the benders, the family vanished. The California Gold Rush caused a mad dash to the hills, with mining camps and towns springing up all around them. That meant a huge increase in demand for goods, 
which spiked prices and led to egregious price gouging. It was more expensive to live in certain towns than it was to live in Silicon Valley today. Here's how much you'd expect to spend in 1851 in California mining towns. A single egg could cost as much as $3, equivalent to $105 today. A pound of butter could cost $20, or about $700 today. Gold pans that once sold for $0.20 cents now went for $8, or $280 today. A shovel could sell for $36, a whopping $1,200 today. And keep in mind, most miners were lucky to find $10 to $15 in gold a day. When young Conrad Reed found a large yellow rock in his father's field in Cabarrus County, North Carolina, in 1799, he had no idea what it was, neither did his father, John Reed. The family reportedly used it as a doorstop for several years until a visiting jeweler recognized it as a 17-pound gold nugget. The rush was on. Eventually, Congress built the Charlotte Mint to cope with the sheer volume of gold dug up in North Carolina. In 1828, gold was discovered in Georgia, leading to the nation's second gold rush. And finally, in 1848, James Marshall struck it rich at Sutter's Mill in California. Thousands of 49ers moved west to seek their fortune. Anyone who watched the television show Gunsmoke growing up is well acquainted with Miss Kitty's Long Branch Saloon of Dodge City, Kansas. What viewers may not have realized is that the Long Branch really did exist. No one knows exactly what year it was established, but the original saloon burned down in the Great Front Street Fire of 1885. The saloon was later resurrected and now serves as a tourist attraction, featuring a reproduction bar with live entertainment. According to the Boot Hill Museum, the original Long Branch Saloon served milk, tea, lemonade, sarsaparilla, alcohol, and beer. In poker, a poker hand consisting of two aces and eights is called a dead man's hand. That's because those were the cards Wild Bill Hickok was holding when Jack McCall shot him in the back of the head in Deadwood, South Dakota. According to legend, both pairs were black suited with spade aces and club eights. After several botched trials, McCall was eventually hanged for his crimes. The chair that Hickok was murdered in can still be seen at Saloon Number 10 in modern Deadwood. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and let me know what you thought down in the comments section. Thank you.